In today's video, I'm reviewing the SCHD Dividend ETF listed on the New York Stock Exchange. We'll go over the ETF fact sheet, including the management fee, the index the ETF tracks, dividend yield, payment frequency, and the fund's performance. ETFs are personally my favorite way to passively invest as it takes the stress and worry out of stock market investing, which can be very volatile with wild price swings holding individual stocks. I will also go over the top holdings in the fund, as these typically make up the largest portion of the weightings and resulting performance of the ETF overall. It is always crucial to understand what you actually own in these ETFs before buying them. If there's any ETFs you are interested in and would like me to make a video on, write them down in the comments section below. Dividend ETFs offer a number of attractive characteristics. Most notably, dividend ETFs can save investors a lot of time researching companies and potential headaches compared to owning individual stocks and keeping up to date with the latest news. The majority of dividend ETFs hold between 50 and several hundred companies and are well diversified across a number of industries. Purchasing shares of most dividend ETFs provides instant diversification to a portfolio, providing an investor with protection against being overly exposed to a particular sector that falls out of favour. Dividend ETF investors don't need to worry much about constantly monitoring their holdings because many ETFs are well diversified and no single company is likely going to make or break the performance of an ETF. The consistent cash flow from dividend ETFs can also provide more ease for investors instead of solely relying on the stock price and capital appreciation. The bulk of stock market's returns have come from dividend reinvestment, leading to the compounding growth over time, which is a great way to build wealth and more passive income. SCHD is an ETF provided by Charles Schwab, who own and operate the fund. Charles Schwab are the ones who actually own the underlying shares in the individual companies. So when we buy shares in the ETF, we buy from Charles Schwab, who continually issue new shares in an open-end fund, and not the individual companies inside the ETF. Now SCHD aims to track the performance of the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, which is an index focused on the quality and sustainability of dividends. It invests in stocks selected for fundamental strength relative to their peers, based on financial ratios, typically characterized by higher dividend yields in the US stock market compared to the broad index. The first quality the ETF looks for is sustainable dividends with financial quality. The indices not only seek to track stocks with consistent dividend payouts, but they also apply a quality screen for the sustainability of yields. They seek what are called quality yields, by requiring stocks to have paid dividends for a minimum of 10 consecutive years and by ranking stocks by a composite score calculated from the cash flow to total debt ratio, return on equity or ROE, dividend yield, and five-year dividend growth rate. On top of these screens, there is also a monthly dividend review to ensure dividend sustainability, where every month, stocks that have cancelled their dividends will be removed from the index. The next quality is dividend growth against future rising interest rates. A focus on dividend growth in an environment where market participants are concerned about rising rates may be important. Typically, high-yield equity strategies are biased towards rate-sensitive sectors, which tend to pay out higher yields because of the leverage that they can take on, mainly because of mature business models such as utilities. Such entities are exposed when rates rise. Selection based on dividend growth helps to ensure that firms that can develop their business and increase their payouts are favoured in the selection process. Such businesses are often well-managed companies, from both capital structure and operational perspectives. The next quality is investability. Differentiating the Dow Jones Dividend 100 indices from other dividend strategies are their strict size and liquidity screens and their weighting method, which is based on a modified market cap approach. These attributes were chosen with the goal of increasing index investability in terms of liquidity, capacity, and turnover. Size and liquidity screens could help to reduce the influence of smaller and more distressed stocks on the portfolio, led into a liquid of basket of constituents. A weighting method based on modified market cap could not only help maximise the index capacity, but it also has the potential to lead to a lower turnover than alternatively weighted indices. That weight constituents primarily based off yield or total dividends. Now to find the ETF in your brokerage account, you'll need to type in the ticker code SCHD to bring up the options to buy or sell shares in the fund. It pays distributions, which are dividends from the ETF, four times a year, with a yield of 3.26%, and has a management expense ratio, or MER, of 0.06% per year. So for every $10,000 invested, it will cost $6 per year in fees. And this isn't a bill you have to pay straight away. It's automatically taken from how much money you have invested in the ETF's total. So you never notice anything being paid or taken out of your brokerage account. Now, since this ETF tracks the large dividend US companies, it is heavily tilted toward financial and IT companies. The largest portion of the fund at 20% is in IT, followed by financials at 19% and consumer staples at 15%. Materials and energy companies make up the smallest percentage of the fund under 5% each. 
when purchasing units in an ETF, I like to have a basic understanding of the top holdings, as these companies will have most of my money allocated to them, and they will end up driving the bulk of the fund's performance. So we'll quickly go over which companies are in the ETF's top holdings and what they do to make money. The top holdings consist of well-known blue chip companies that are firmly established with consistent profits that are returned to shareholders via dividends. Home Depot is the largest home improvement retailer in the United States, supplying tools, construction products and services. The company is headquartered in Georgia. It operates many big box format stores across the United States, including the District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands, all 10 provinces of Canada and the 31 Mexican states and Mexico City. MRO company Interline Brands, now the Home Depot Pro, is also owned by Home Depot, with 70 distribution centres across the United States. Home Depot makes money by selling home improvements products and services to do-it-yourself customers, do-it-for-me customers and professional customers through its stores. Merck is an American multinational pharmaceutical company headquartered in New Jersey. Merck was established as an American affiliate in 1891. It develops and produces medicines, vaccines, biological therapies and animal health products. It has multiple drugs or products including cancer immunotherapy, anti-diabetic medication and vaccines against HPV and chickenpox. It makes most of its money by researching and selling their medical therapies across the world. Verizon Communications is an American multinational telecommunications conglomerate headquartered in New York City. Verizon is one of the world's leading providers of communications, information, entertainment products and services to customers, businesses and government agencies. Verizon offers voice, data and video services and solutions on its wireless and wireline networks. The offerings meet the customer demand for mobility, reliable network connectivity, security and control. Verizon makes its money by selling wireless and wireline services to retail and business customers throughout the US. Cisco Systems is an American multinational technology conglomerate headquartered in California in the Silicon Valley. Cisco Systems was founded in December 1984 by Leonard Bosak and Sandy Lerner, two Stanford University computer scientists who had been instrumental in connecting computers at Stanford. The company makes money by manufacturing and selling networking hardware, software, telecommunications equipment, video conferencing and other high technology services and products around the world, predominantly to other businesses. Pfizer is an American multinational pharmaceutical and biotechnology company headquartered in Manhattan, New York City. The company was established in 1849 in New York by two German immigrants, Charles Pfizer and his cousin Charles F. Erhardt. Pfizer develops and produces medicines and vaccines for immunology, oncology, cardiology, endocrinology and neurology. It makes money by researching and selling these medical therapies across the world. Texas Instruments is an American technology company headquartered in Dallas, Texas, that designs and manufactures semiconductors and various integrated circuits. It makes money by selling these to electronics designers and manufacturers globally. It is one of the top 10 semiconductor companies worldwide based on sales volume. The company's focus is on developing analog chips and embedded processes, which account for more than 80% of its revenue. PepsiCo is an American multinational food, snack and beverage corporation headquartered in New York. PepsiCo's business encompasses all aspects of the food and beverage market. It oversees the manufacturing, distribution and marketing of its products. PepsiCo was formed in 1965 with the merger of the Pepsi-Cola company and Frito-Lay. PepsiCo has since expanded from its namesake Pepsi-Cola product to an immensely diversified range of food and beverage brands. It makes its money by producing and selling its food and drink products across the world. Amgen is an American multinational biopharmaceutical company headquartered in California. One of the world's largest independent biotech companies, Amgen was established in Thousand Oaks, California in 1980. Focused on molecular biology and biochemistry, its goal is to provide a healthcare business based on recombinant DNA technology. The company's largest selling product line was Nulasta, which is an immunostimulator used to prevent infections in patients undergoing cancer chemotherapy. It makes money by researching and selling their medical therapies across the world. The Coca-Cola Company is a multinational beverage corporation headquartered in Georgia. The Coca-Cola Company has interest in the manufacturing, retailing and marketing of non-alcoholic beverages, concentrates and syrups along with alcoholic beverages. The company produces Coca-Cola, the sugary drink it is best known for, invented in 1886. It makes its money by producing and selling its drinks across the world. Broadcom Corporation is an American fabulous semiconductor company that makes products for the wireless and broadband communication industry. It was acquired by Avago Technologies in 2016 and currently operates as a wholly owned subsidiary of the merged entity Broadcom. The company makes money by designing and selling semiconductor chips in wired infrastructure such as broadband access gateways and components for data centers, along with wireless chips mainly for the smartphone market and enterprise storage solutions such as hard disks and solid state drives. 
Now, ETFs are considered to be a low-risk investment because they are low-cost and hold a basket of stocks or other securities, increasing diversification. For most individual investors, ETFs represent an ideal type of asset which builds a diverse portfolio. Still, unique risks can arise from holding ETFs, as well as special considerations paid to taxation, depending on the type of ETF. Since inception, SCHD has had an average annualised return of 14% before tax, and a cumulative return of over 300%, which goes to show the power of dividend reinvestment and compound interest, keeping the money invested growing faster over longer periods of time. Now, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, but it's always a good sign of consistently improving business fundamentals, continually driving each individual stock higher within the ETF. I prefer to look at the cumulative returns as it includes the dividends paid to shareholders, which should always be included as we're getting some value back. Plus, with the dividends reinvested, this is what provides the compounding effect, exponentially increasing our returns the longer we have our money in the fund. This is the sort of approach I take investing for the very long term using ETFs and one day live off the investment portfolio as passive income through either dividends or selling down small parts of the position, but maintaining the bulk of the capital. If there's any ETFs you're interested in and would like me to make a video on, write it down in the comments section below. And if you want to see these companies make more money in detail, watch the playlist shown in the end screen. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ETF and whether you currently own any shares or plan to buy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.